The key objective of VFR flight planning is to produce a marked sectional and navigation log. With these documents, it's possible to navigate extended cross-country flights using only pilotage and dead reckoning. The calculations done during flight planning allow you to predict the wind correction needed to track a course and the arrival time and fuel burn for each checkpoint along the way. Start your flight plan by marking your departure and destination airports on your VFR sectional. Then select a route that includes easy to recognize checkpoints that will keep you clear of any airspaces you aren't purposefully trying to enter. Checkpoints should be spaced closely enough together so that each time you fly over one you can pick out the next one, but not so close that you can just fly right past one without even noticing. 10 to 15 miles is a good rule of thumb. Mark and label your checkpoints and copy them into your VFR nav log. If a VOR will provide course guidance to your checkpoint, write its identifier and frequency in the box to the right. The first leg of your flight plan should take you to top of climb, which we'll locate later. Our route keeps us on a constant course as we pass Middletown, Oxford, and Brookville. Then we turn south at Batesville, pass for sales, stay east of Route 421 to keep us clear of restricted area 3403A, and then when we reach the town of Madison, we turn west to find the airport. Next, we use the sectional nautical mile side of our slide rule to figure out the distance between each checkpoint. We write those distances on the sectional and plug them into our nav log. We align the compass rows from our slide rule with a line of longitude, and then read our true course. If our course is mostly north-south, we can also use a line of latitude. After updating our nav log with our true course, we're ready to select an altitude and start computing our corrected heading and ground speed. We can get the winds aloft from the graphical area forecast. To do that, we enter our approximate flight path into the dialog, zoom in, select our departure time, and start clicking through altitudes until we find one that looks favorable. The winds are pretty similar across our entire route, so we'll use 235 at 25 for the entire trip. 6,500 will be our altitude to comply with hemispheric altitude rules. Temperature forecasts are not integrated into the graphical area forecast at the time I'm recording this video, so you'll have to get that from the winds and temps forecast. The next thing we'll need is our true airspeed and fuel burn in gallons per hour. We get that from our performance charts. Since there's no row for 6,500, we'll do a rough interpolation between 5 and 7,500. While we're here, we'll use the rate of climb data to estimate the amount of time it will take us to get from 720 feet up to 6,500, along with the true airspeed and fuel burn we'll have during this time. If you choose to make any approximations with the performance interpolations, make sure to be conservative. Once we have our true airspeed, we'll need to compute the effect of wind for each leg of our flight plan. Rotate the wind direction under the true index on your E6B flight computer. Mark the wind velocity along the center line. It doesn't matter where the center dot is when you do this because the vertical tick marks are uniformly spaced. Now rotate your true course under the true index. The arrow is now a visual representation of the wind's orientation relative to your direction of flight. Line the start of your wind arrow up with your aircraft's true airspeed. Your ground speed now appears under the center hole and your wind correction angle is read from the curved scale. After repeating this for each leg of the flight plan, write in your ground speed and apply the wind correction angle to compute your true heading. The true heading should make logical sense as it captures the crab that you'll need in order to track straight without getting blown off course by the forecast wind conditions. Now that we have our ground speed and time needed to reach altitude, we can compute the distance needed to reach top of climb and mark it on our nav log. Magnetic variation is depicted on the sectional by purple dashed lines. The variation is printed as degrees east or degrees west somewhere along the line. For each leg, figure out which magnetic variation it's closest to and write the corresponding value into the nav log. Compute the magnetic heading by adding westerly variation or subtracting easterly variation. Finally, the corrected heading is computed by applying the corrections described in the correction card that is installed on each airplane. This accounts for magnetic deviation caused by the systems installed in the aircraft itself. The corrected heading is the direction that you will actually point the aircraft in flight. Computing the estimated time between checkpoints is a simple matter of dividing the distance by the ground speed and then multiplying by 60 to get minutes. The fuel burn per leg is the leg time in hours multiplied by the fuel burn per hour. Totals are self-explanatory and should be sanity checked to make sure they seem reasonable. Finally, the airport information for departure and destination can be copied from either the sectional or chart supplement. Current weather should be copied from your weather briefing or obtained by calling the airport's automated weather surface if there is one. Finally, double check to make sure your climb performance data includes fuel reserve padding for taxi and run-up. If not, apply that padding yourself.